Hi. In this video, I will introduce some language feature, or you could say language concept of C, the concept of variables. Now recall that a C program is always a high level description of some assembly code. The original purpose of C was to be a portable assembler. You, know, you want to support many different architectures with the same code. And for that understanding, it's important to understand this um, concept of a variable that it, for example, always has an address, a certain size and a type. And you also have to know the difference between so-called global and local variables. So because we actually describe some assembly code to the compiler on a high level, we also have to know the rules. How can we give a description to the compiler so that the compiler actually knows what we mean? So that means we also need some kind of understanding how this compiler works. First, the single characters of your program are grouped into tokens. And you know this concept from this introduction to the Unix shell. Now in C, you have different kind of tokens. For example, uh, the so-called keywords are uh, tokens that cannot be used for your variable names and function names. They are, for example, used for describing the type of your variable. And other token kinds can be used for such things, for variable names and function names. So you certainly have to know about these rules. Uh, what am I allowed to use for my variable? On the website, you will find the more detailed description of these token kinds and the rules how uh, the Lexer uh, generates these tokens. Uh, here I will just use this Hello World program to give you a first idea and then show you how you can use the Lexer of the Ulm C compiler so that you can see what tokens are recognized in my C program. Now the first kind of token that I'm mentioning here, the comments are actually a token kind recognized by the preprocessor and then removed. So the C compiler would not uh, know about this uh, token kind or doesn't have to know about it. The next kind, the reserved words or keywords, are in this case int uh, and const. And the next uh, token kind, the identifiers, uh, is the kind of token uh, that you can use, for example, for this variable names and function names. Uh, here we have two token of this kind, printf and main. And now here comes uh, some kind of an exception to this rule. For example, uh, main is an identifier, but it has a special meaning in C. It has the meaning uh, that it's the name for this function main, the function that gets called first when you run your program. And that will mean that, for example, you cannot use it as the name of a global variable. You actually could use it for a local variable in some cases, so you see, uh, there will be a few additional rules, but uh, in the beginning, let's not um, get too much into the details about that. The next kind of tokens, the literals, uh, here we have, for example, this string literal, um, can also um, be used uh, for other things. So they are also integer literals. And then you, there are certain rules how, for example, you can describe a hexadecimal representation for some integer. and then lastly, what uh, you see here are lots of delimiters or punctuators like this uh, parentheses, uh, commatas and uh, the dots. Now, let me show you on the command line how you can see how the lexer is producing that. So this is the Hello World program from before. And with Ulm CC dash test lexer, you have the lexer of the Ulm compiler. And now we want to see the tokens in this Hello World program then you get this list. And here in the first column, you basically see the internal name for a certain token. For example, here, this int was recognized as a token of kind int, which is a special uh, kind of a keyword or one of the keywords. And here printf was recognized as an identifier. Also uh, here, main was recognized as an identifier. And here I see that I should correct the slides these three dots are recognized, of course, as just one single um, punctuator. Let me add here as kind of a fun fact that in this C program, I'm using this emoji as an identifier for a global variable initialized with 42. And based on the description provided on the website, this would be illegal because I'm using for this identifier a character which is not within this 
allowed character set that is uh, specified there as a set of ASCII characters. But now if I'm using GCC, which is on my machine actually the Clang C compiler, then you can compile it into an executable. And the same should be the case if you use an actual uh, GCC. And this executable is also doing what it's supposed to do. It returns 42 as an exit code. That's because GCC and Clang is actually using a newer C standard. And on the website, I'm using the description of this later uh, C standard uh, called C98. If you try to compile it with that, you should get this expected error message that you are using an illegal character. And a similar error message you will get from the Ulm C compiler. So from the Lexer, you rarely will get any error message. Uh, and if you're not using things like umlauts for identifiers, then even uh, if the compiler is using the old standard, um, you're safe in this uh, respect. Most likely, however, you will get error message from the parser, which is then using the sequence of tokens to analyze the structure of your program. And here you have to follow certain syntactical rules. And I will not describe them here very formal, but let me first show you what kind of structure the parser would detect in this Hello World program. From this first line, it would detect a so-called declaration of a function and from the remaining lines, a so-called function definition. And you see here that this token after this closed parenthesis obviously is uh, making the difference. In the first case, you have this semicolon and in the second case, this open curly parenthesis with this code block. And if you would omit either of these two characters, if after this closed um, curly parenthesis, some other token uh, gets detected, you get a more or less meaningful error message, depends on the compiler that you use. Because in the language, it's required that uh, for a function declaration or a function definition, you first have some return type, followed by some identifier for the function name, followed by um, description of the parameter list. So this is usually more than just uh, one token. And then you either have this semicolon so that it now is clear that it's a function declaration or this block of uh, statements. The formal definition, how um, things have to be written in your code so that uh, the parser can detect it, will be uh, expressed with so-called production rules, but not in this video. I will come to this uh, back later when we're talking about expressions, because then I can give you more vivid examples how these production rules um, also can be used for creating a tree structure of these tokens uh, with some meaning, which uh, express, for example, the precedence of certain operators. I now want to give you a rough understanding for this terms declaration and definition. Your C program is supposed to describe some assembly code. And for the cell world program, you saw this assembly code. You didn't understand it, but you saw that from this function definition, there was some code generated, some assembly instructions after this label main. And that's roughly spoken the meaning of a definition that some code will be generated if it's syntactically correct and also passes some semantic checks. If um, we omitted this first line, this printf, still some executable was generated and it was working. You saw this hello world message, but you got these warnings. So this first line, this declaration was used so that the compiler knew that the function printf is available later in a certain form and um, that it uh, was used correctly. And we can think of that as kind of a bookkeeping information that we provided to the compiler. Now, actually, these terms definition declarations are so in this uh, respect meaning different things. Uh, one generates code, one is just used for bookkeeping, but um, you have to think of these terms as um, one is a special case of the other. A uh, definition is always also a declaration, so it's a special kind of declaration. 
and for variables which also can be just declared but also defined i can explain this a bit better when we are talking about variables in c it always means that one memory cell or a block of memory cells is used for storing the value of this variable and here you see an example for defining a variable called a of type int and because it's a definition you actually can see that some assembly code is required so that the program can make use of this memory cells for this variable a and the bookkeeping that is internally done by the compiler keeps track of informations about um, for example the meaning of the bit patterns stored in this memory cells in this case that it's storing a signed integer value and it also keeps track of about the number of memory cells used for this variable the so-called size of the variable and also about the location of this variable in the memory the address of the variable which is the address of the first memory cell used for this variable and here i will show you some example uh, how to access some of this information from a c program and of course we also look into the assembly code in this little program i'm actually showing you quite a few things first of all i'm defining more than just one variable here i'm defining variable a and here i'm defining variable x in both cases these variables have the type int the important difference is that this definition is outside of any function it's a so-called global definition of a variable and this definition is inside of this function main it's a so-called local definition of a variable now let me also tell you what these printfs are doing because i'm doing more than just printing hello world you see that in this string literal i'm using the so-called placeholders this percent d for example is a placeholder for an int value and this percent p is a placeholder for an address this percent set u is a placeholder for the size of a variable and these placeholders will be replaced with what i'm specifying here as additional parameters uh, the first placeholder with the value of a so that goes here this here is the so-called address operator applied to the variable a so this will give us the address of variable a will be placed here and this is the size of operator which gives us the size the number of bytes used for this variable and that goes here and the same for variable x and now i first will use gcc or actually clang to translate this into an executable and run it and then you see this variable a has the initial value zero x has this initial value one we haven't explicitly defined here any initial values but these are the values in this memory cells used for this variable and these are the addresses of these variables and you see that four bytes are used for representing each of this variable now let me also show you the result that you get when you use the umc compiler a also has this initial value zero x has a different initial value um, the addresses are different and the sizes are different on the ulm two bytes are used for these variables and a few of these things are uh, kind of random and other things are uh, well defined by the standard and you will see for example that the initial value of a global variable is always well defined it's e either zero or the value that you specify actually i can show you that right now if i'm using a definition like that Then I have a initialized definition of a global variable b and then I also can change this here and then of course do this again could have done it from the beginning you see the initial value uh, was specified here we have of course a different address of b that cannot use the same memory cells as were uh, used for a or x the size is of course also the same and with the umc compiler uh, 
we get this initial value 0, 42, here a different uh, initial value, the addresses are different, and uh, the sizes are again 2. And you will see um, it's also no coincidence that this global variables always have an address which is much smaller than the address of this local variables. Because um, for the global variables, either the data segment or the BSS segment is used, and for this local variables, the so-called stack, which is um, basically at the end of the memory. But before I tell you more about that, let me first show you how these definitions actually have some impact um, on the code generation that you actually can see in the assembly code um, the generated or the code generated from these definitions. So I'm using for that the OMC compiler because it's easier to explain its assembly output. And then for example you see here this label B and this 42. So these two lines were generated from this definition here. And I think at the end of the assembly code you yeah, see here that this was generated from this global variable A. And you also see this dot BSS defines that this is part of the BSS segment. And here this label B was in this data segment defined. Now, where is this local variable x? Uh, where can you see the code for that? Well, actually, you will see that this line um, somehow has to do something with this local variable x here. And let me just do it like that. I'm removing these lines, so I no longer have a local variable and then generate from that new assembly code. And it should be basically the same code as uh, on the right hand side, except for this difference. And then you see here Vim recognized that the file changed and if I would now reload it I would see that this here changed to zero. So seeing the impact on uh, the code generation uh, that you get from a local variable definition is a bit harder to see but there is some effect. Remember in the first video of this series I told you that programming in C means programming close to the hardware. Not as close as if you would directly program in assembly, but uh, compared to other higher level languages, uh, you have to know more technical details. You have to know, for example, about the memory, that it's organized in bytes in memory cells and that each memory cell has an address. And you also have to know about how a program actually gets executed, that first this executable gets loaded into memory, it's uh, segments, the text segment, the data segment, and this zero initialized PSS segment. And after that, the execution begins with some first instruction. And this understanding uh, now allows you to understand why the C language can be so specific about the initial value of a global variable. Because if you initialize it explicitly, it is part of the data segment. And if you do not initialize it, it's part of the PSS segment. So before the execution begins, it has a well-defined initial value. And the C standard is really very specific about it. Now about the local variables, they are part of the functions. When this execution begins, every instance of a function gets its own part uh, of the memory. There will be some part reserved for this function call. And this is then part of the stack and this fraction of the stack which belongs to one function is the so-called stack frame. And this part of the memory might already have been used before. So there might be some leftovers from previous functions. And there will now be 
and there will be no cleanup. So if there was already some value there, it's still there when the function gets called. So local variables occupy in general some memory cells that were used before. And the initial value that you see is actually some leftover from some previous function. And here also the C standard is very specific that an initial value of an uninitialized local variable is undefined because it depends on what happened before. 